Hey y'all, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Mogi Beth, and for those of y'all who are new here, I'm a full-time reseller. I've been reselling for three and a half years, primarily on the Poshmark app. And if y'all are new to this app, definitely download it and use my code MogiBeth. You'll get $10 off your first purchase because you can really seriously make money on this app. And that's what we're talking about today. I have made $100,000 on this app as of recently. Yay! I have learned a lot getting to this point and I want to share some of those lessons with y'all but if you want to celebrate this with me definitely give me a thumbs up subscribe to this channel if you want to go with me on my journey to 200,000 so today I want to dive into the different ups and downs I had along my journey to get to 100,000 three lessons that I've learned and then three different things I want to implement to get to my next 100,000 a lot quicker so I think the best way to to illustrate my journey from zero dollars in earnings to a hundred thousand dollars in earnings which by the way this hundred thousand dollars number is our earnings on Poshmark so it's after the Poshmark fee but before cost of goods or any other expenses so this is the amount of money that was actually deposited into my bank account but anyways I think the best way to actually illustrate it is through a graph and Matt made this graph for me and I think it is really helps summarize the different peaks and valleys I went through over the years 2017 is really when I started reselling on Poshmark. I was really doing it as a hobby. Whenever I had spare time, mainly on the weekends, but I was pursuing other things. Matt and I were doing a full house renovation. I was trying to open up a different kind of business. So it was just a completely different landscape from where I'm at now, but I definitely picked some things up here and there along the way. But in 2018, that's when I started to really make it a bona fide side hustle and started really learning a lot, learning what worked for me, what didn't work for me. However, in May of 2018, I took a whole month off, which was fabulous. I went to Thailand and Japan, but my closet was on vacation mode. And after returning from that trip, I actually decided that I wanted to change my career and I studied and got my real estate license. So once again, reselling was there, but it was definitely on the side. It wasn't until I went to Posh Fest in 2018 that I thought, hey, I really enjoyed this reselling thing and I wanna make it a full-time career and I think I can do that. So in October, mid-October of 2018, I went full-time. And in November of 2018, I really had one of my best sales months for a while. And it was so exciting to me. I had found all of these free people new with tag sweaters that I was able to resell for a really good profit margin. And I was really feeling great. So going into 2019, I felt like the wind was behind my back. I found my first office space. I hired my very first part-time employee and was really gaining momentum, was focusing a lot on Instagram and growing that and was feeling really, really good about my reselling career and this incremental growth along the way. However, at the end of May, 2019, Matt and I moved cross country from Kansas to Oregon. And when that happened, I also took a month off to stay back in Wichita and renovate our house um, and finish those renovations. So then when I actually landed in Oregon in July, I was very much discombobulated. Momentum was lost. I was trying to figure out where I was gonna operate my business because I didn't wanna operate it out of my home. I was also trying to figure out what that would look like because Portland, Oregon was completely new to me. All my sourcing you know, spots were suddenly gone and I had to figure it out anew. And so it took a long time to figure that out and eventually I found an office space in August, which was very exciting, but moving took a bigger toll on me mental health wise than I ever could have anticipated. I went into a deep depression in September of 2019 and I talked about that a little bit on Instagram, but September of 2019 was one of my worst months mental health wise, but also one of my worst months reselling wise. But after going to Posh Fest 2019, I actually, it really helped reorganize things in my mind and reprioritize things in my mind. And it gave me a lot of motivation and inspiration moving forward. So after that, I felt like I was really gaining momentum again. And um, in 
going into 2020, Matt came on with me full time at the end of January. In February was so exciting. We had our best sales month ever. And then going into March and April, obviously the pandemic happened. And, and here we are in May. So that is kind of the summation of what my whole reselling journey has looked like thus far. But there are just a couple things I wanted to touch on once again. One is that there are ups and downs in my reseller journey. Like I mentioned, mental health struggles, moving, family members getting sick, just different things that caused me to take a step back from the reselling journey until I was ready to take a step back into it. And uh, I think that's actually one beautiful thing about reselling is that it is flexible. And although you do get out of it what you put into it, it will be there again for you when you're ready to go back into it. And that's what I've learned time after time is that, you know, it's disappointing sometimes when you do lose that momentum and it does take time to get back on board and start really reselling at full force again. But it's possible and it's there and that and it's flexible and um, I'm really grateful for that. But that being said, there is actually one other thing that I realized this year and we'll talk a little bit about it later, but um, in February, my best sales month ever, I actually took a week off and went to Mexico and stayed at a resort and it was wonderful. And while I was doing that, I didn't put my closet in vacation mode because I had a friend who was doing my shipping for me. And I was actually listing on the beach, which was so fun. But what I learned through that experience, like unlike other vacations I've taken in the past, is that I actually don't have to be 100% physically present in order for me to not lose momentum, in order for me to still make money. And that was a huge revelation for me because I think a lot of times I often think I have, I'm such a massively integral part of this business, but that was an ego check where I realized, hey, this is something that's possible where I don't have to actually be there. So that's also what reselling can look like. And I think we're learning that more and more as we go along, but we'll talk about that later. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to touch on is just the idea that in, within this graph, as you can see, the vast majority of the $100,000 I made was when I went full time and within the last year and a half. And when I was part time or doing it as just, you know, a hobby or a side hustle, I was making pretty good money, you know, and for what it was, I was making maybe $1,000 a month in earnings, which to me was a lot, or maybe $2,000. And so I guess what I wanna say about this is, I see it in the comments on Instagram or YouTube a lot of times where people are comparing themselves to other resellers. And especially if you're part-time comparing yourself to a full-time reseller, it's like comparing apples to oranges. It's just a completely different set of expectations and standards and frankly responsibility. And so you're actually probably way further along than I was at that same point in my journey. Um, but trying to compare, you know, someone who's been in it three and a half months to someone who's been in it three and a half years just is not an apt comparison. So I just wanted to say, give yourself a lot of grace and definitely a, give yourself a pat on the back, especially if you are successfully reselling no matter what stage in your career that you're at. So that being said, I do want you guys to have a much faster acceleration of your journey than I had. So I wanna give you three lessons that I learned along the way that really were game changers for me and things that I feel really passionate about right now. I could literally go on and on and on for years about the different lessons, but these three I really think are important to understand. And then I'm also gonna talk about how I am going to get to 200,000 a lot faster and three things I plan to implement in order to do so. So the first thing, lesson that I've learned is prioritizing net profit over profit margin. And this is something that I learned slowly, but I'm really glad that I did. Let's take an example of two items. I'll put them here. Item number one, you find in retail arbitrage. It's Say that it's something that you know is in super, super high demand and will have a really fast sell through rate. Say it's like a spell in the gypsy rare dress, something like that. And it costs $70 and you know for pretty certainly that it could sell for $150. Okay. Then over here, I'll say maybe you find a Madewell tank top at the bins and it's super light, 
So it costs something like 50 cents and you know pretty certainly that you could sell it for $15. So on example A, if you sell it for $150, you will earn $120 and you'll have a profit margin of 41.66%, which in reselling is actually pretty low. Uh, when you compare it over to example B, which if you sell it for $15, you'll earn 12. That profit margin is really high, it's about 96%. So if you were looking at the two deals, you'd probably say, oh, I want this one time and time and time again, if you're basing your decision-making strictly on profit margin. But what I started understanding is it takes the same amount of time to list, process, steam, inventory, photograph this item as it does this item. So when I have to sell four of these in order to make the same amount as this one. And so if you really value your time and understand that you have a very limited amount of time, especially when you're a solopreneur, I slowly started to understand that net profit was really important. And the net profit of an item, which in this case was 50, and this case was 11 and a half, made a difference in my decision making a lot. And I started gravitating more and more towards the items that could garner me enough of a net profit to justify my time. But one thing I do want to mention is that purchasing example A does open you up to a lot more risk. It's a much riskier option than buying something for 50 cents, right? But what that did was if I was willing to pay, you know, upwards of 50, 60, $70 for an item, it opened up a lot of different opportunities when it came to sourcing. Suddenly, as long as I was willing to really do my research, understand trends, understand brands, which is something that I love to do anyway, if I was able to pay up, then I could go to buy sell trade stores, I could do retail arbitrage, I could do online consignment through ThreadUp or The Real Real or online thrifting. There was just a lot more opportunities that were suddenly available to me and it just became a completely different game. So that is something that I learned and I know that's a debate that goes on amongst the reselling community. It's there's no one right way to run your business model, but this is something that has definitely helped me move the needle a lot faster. Okay, the next lesson that I learned is a really, really big one, y'all, and something that I hope I can articulate well because I think this is applicable to all of us. Number two is identify less with your business, and that sounds weird. But in the beginning of reselling, it was growing and I decided to name it Mogi Beth and was feeling really excited and passionate about it. I fell into the trap of tying up my worth with my business. And so every time I would make a sale, I would suddenly have a wave of anxiety because I was really anxious about oh my gosh, meeting this person's expectations, making sure it's perfect. I would check the item several times. I would watch the tracking information and then I would anticipate their rating. And anytime I would get a rating less than five stars, I would be devastated. What I realized I was doing is I was taking small business failures as a message that I personally was a failure. And, and I was taking every little business mistake personally. And I think that really inhibited me from growing, obviously. When there's so much emotion entangled with all these transactions, it caused me to be on a roller coaster emotionally. And so um, it also affected the way I sourced. If I found something on an item that I sourced with a flaw, I would not want to list it. I just didn't want that to represent me. And over time, I had to let go of that, especially as I hired employees and learned that they're going to make mistakes too. And that's just human and part of the process. And it doesn't mean anything about them as a person. Once I understood that the business was a business and not a representation of my worth, but instead just a skill set I was developing and a set of transactions and something I was doing, but not a representation of who I was, it completely changed the game. I'm still really working on that, to be honest. It's I, it's definitely helped me grow as a person over time, but um, if I could go back and tell myself and transmit that information to myself, I think I would have able, been able to make a lot more sales a lot more sooner. So something I just wanted to tell y'all in case you are there in your journey. Okay, and the last lesson that I learned is that whenever I was about to take on something that was completely unknown to me that I'd never done before, I would of course have a lot of fear. 
And something that I've leaned on time and time and time again during those times is a break-even analysis. A good old-fashioned break-even analysis, y'all. And the reason that is, is because it answers the question, what's the bare minimum I have to do in order for this to be worth my time, worth my money, worth my investment? So, for example, when I was hiring a part-time employee for the first time, I was really nervous about it. I wasn't sure if I was ready to do it or not. So. In order to calm down my fear, to calm down the emotions, I put pen to paper, did a little bit of simple math, and figured out that, you know, roughly, one additional sale would pay for about two employee hours. And so then I asked myself, okay, well, what do I project two employee hours actually resulting in? And that was, you know, on the conservative side, maybe 10 additional listings. And so it was easy for me to see that an employee would soon over time pay for themselves. And even though I was quite frankly very scared to hire an employee the first time, leaning on the math and leaning on the numbers really gave me a sense of comfort in knowing that it was a smart business decision and that I wasn't going into this completely blind. And so that's really the lesson that I learned is if you are going up against any risk or opportunity that you're wanting to take on, really put the pen to paper, really ask yourself, you know, at worst, what would I have to do in order for this thing to pay for itself, in order for me to make my money back? And hopefully after doing that exercise, you'll find a sense of comfort. And if not, maybe it's not a good business decision, quite frankly, and you'll be able to walk away feeling that comfort as well. So I hope that is helpful for y'all in determining what risks and opportunities to take on moving forward. And to just take some emotion out of it, do a little bit of math, apply a little bit of logic, and I promise it will be a lot easier. Okay, so the final thing I want to talk about are the three things I want to implement in order to get to the next 100,000. Because y'all, I am proud that I hit this marker, but I am really excited to hit the 200,000 marker a lot sooner. So I have three ways in which I am planning on doing that. First is understanding and really coming to terms with the fact that hustle is overrated. And what I mean by this is I grew up with a dad who grew up on a farm. And so he would get up, you know, at the crack of dawn and be on the tractor before school. And so I have the self-limiting belief that in order to make money, you have to grind it out. You have to work really, 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 really hard. And the truth of the matter is, in order to make money, you have to exchange some kind of value. And sometimes, really, that doesn't look like a lot of grinding of physical labor and strenuous hours. Sometimes, quite frankly, that's being on a beach and clicking some numbers around. I mean, that is some people's realities. So instead, I'm having to really deconstruct this self-limiting belief and really believe that I don't have to hustle, 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 grind, 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 but instead can take on more complex problems and really focus on the value that I can provide. And which leads me to my second thing that I'm implementing in order to get to 200,000, which is understand what I and I alone can do and understand what I can delegate, train, or hire out. When I look at it this way, I understand that really the three things that I and I alone can do is source because that is a skill that I have honed and developed over time. Manage people because I know the processes and the systems better than anyone and for now I need to be able to train people, manage them and oversee them. But hopefully, you know, that will be something that I can hand off eventually. And then the third is YouTube because I'm teaching y'all, I'm showing my face, I'm hopefully providing y'all with value and it's all coming from my brain so that's something that just can't be transferred to someone else either. So what I've really had to do is take my ego out of it because I like a lot of us I think want full control over everything and it's really kind of this belief that I have to be involved. I have to have my hand in this. I know how to do this. And the truth of the matter is you know when Matt came on board I learned pretty quickly that these things like steaming and photographing, they can be trained in a matter of days. And even though I've been doing it for years and years and years, I could pay someone to do those things and use my time to do something that's gonna 
hopefully make more money. That's something that I'm really excited about going forward, although it comes with a lot of growing pains and I'm learning a lot about myself and I'm developing my management style, but it is how I'm gonna get to the next level. So I'm very excited. Okay, so the last thing I'm implementing, and Matt wanted me to state it this way. <laughs> Risk it for the biscuit. <laughs> is that a thing? That's a thing, I'm telling you. <laughs> no one has ever gotten rich by playing it safe. And if you guys watch my vision board video, which I'll link up on the screen, you know I have every intention to get rich. So the saying is true, the higher the risk, the higher the reward. But one of the risks that I've been taking more and more recently is putting myself out there, uh, onto YouTube especially. And even within this video, I'm really opening up myself to scrutiny. I'm really laying my cards on the table and showing you monetarily what my journey has looked like. And the reason I do that is because I do actually truly believe that I can provide a lot of value by putting this out there and that it does give a depiction of what this can look like and hopefully it can provide some value to you. So. I'm wading through the fear because there is a lot of it and hopefully this is helpful. But we're also taking a lot of monetary risks and business risks as well. And you know, we're wading through that with excitement but also fear. But I really truly do believe that we are going to hit the next 100,000 a lot sooner because of it. And I'm so, so, so excited. So anyways, I hope this was helpful to y'all. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe and I'll see y'all in the next one. Okay, love y'all so much. Bye. Yay, we did it all in, we made 100,000. If you guys would like to check out these other videos that we have done, I hope they're helpful too. Say bye, Ollie. Bye! <laughs> Little scrug muffin.